let's say theoretically, let's say the Canadians are picking seventh, which is where I think they stand right now. Um, and let's say that Jets pick is 27th, which is, I believe, where it is right now. Um, would the seventh and 27th picks be enough to get to, say, four? So, so that's my point. Like, I don't think trading the Jets pick and the Flames pick next year to move up from seven to four is worth it just because of what those picks can bring you in terms of on the trade market going out and, and acquiring players. I think that would be the Canadians priority under that scenario. Um, but that's just my opinion. I don't, I don't, I don't actually, I haven't actually talked to anyone on the Canadians about this, but um, I think they would rather use those picks to go get players, not draft players to go trade for players. Um as opposed to, because I don't think it'll move the needle right. enough for them to make any significant headway. Because trading up into the top five is tough. That's 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 really hard. You got to add significant value. Um, what was it? The Coyotes when they moved up to eleven, they traded a bunch of picks in the twenties and thirties with the Sharks to get up to eleven. Uh, that's rare. That's a rare thing, and that's kind of you know that's that. And it definitely doesn't happen in the top five. It hasn't happened in a long time, at least. So I would say the scenario, to get back to the question, the scenario, the more likely scenario is that those picks get used to acquire players, established NHL players. I'd be very surprised because, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. defense-heavy draft. And I'd be surprised if the Canadians used, let's say, for example, the seventh overall pick on a, on a defenseman. Uh, if for some reason the teams, the six teams before them ignore the needs and the fact that uh -huh. there are so many good defensemen and they happen to have Lindstrom higher, they happen to have, I don't know, uh, Demidov or, or Heisman or Ketan or whatever, but certain, some of those higher ranked forwards ahead of those defensemen, the Canadians could very well choose instead of trading the later pick to trade the higher pick just because of who's available, because it's not because they're going to be forwards and they're highly ranked that it could, the Canadians are necessarily going to be interested by them. I don't know. I'm just making up examples, but they could very much like Lindstrom and Demidov and not be so high on Eisenman. So depending on who's available, they could say at some point, you know what? We could, based on who's available, where we pick, let's trade seven and get very, very interesting value. Because there might be a team out there that say, well, we need a defenseman and there's one right there that we that's still available mm. and we'll get it at seven. So I think that usually we tend to think that, oh, well, when you have two first round picks, you keep the better one and you trade the latter, the later one. But in this case, Because the Canadians have no need for one more defenseman in the first round, and that is such a, dra a, dra a defense-heavy draft, I can I could see that happening. Yeah, I mean, I would. So. I think you know, with these guys, we have not had a draft with these guys in charge where we've had nothing to do. So. Yeah, so I think, <laughs> no. I, I, you know, I would tend to think that they would take that, they would use that pick to draft a player, but I, I'm not going to dismiss what your theory, because mm -hmm. it's not, it's not impossible to me. Absolutely. Like it's, it just seems, uh, but yeah, I think, well, ultimately to answer the question, picks being used to go get established players seems more likely than any sort of draft Mm -hmm. any draft uh, movement, I guess. Um, okay, let's move on to, uh, we got a question by email from Zach Lisak. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I think so. Zach Lisak, um, who asks, with the Sean Monaghan trade in the books, Ken Hughes has now acquired five additional first-round picks since 2022 when he was named GM, in addition to the two first-round picks that already belonged to the Canadians. Um feels like a good time to evaluate what he's done with those assets and speculate what he will do with the first round picks that remain, which we've kind of gone into. Um, 
Take the halves received from Calgary for Toffoli, turned into Meshar, uh, from the Islanders for Romanov, turned into Doc, from Florida for Sherratt, turned into Newhook, and Slavkovsky and Ryan Backer with their own picks. Um, first round picks are critical to successfully navigate a rebuild, whether they're used to select a player in the draft or as a trade chip for previously drafted talent. How do you feel Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon have done in maximizing the value of the five first round picks they've used so far? Could they have been better? What do you think? So far, I, I'm I'm giving them very very good grades on what they've done. I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Philip Mishar, I don't know. Uh, he's got a very encouraging season in Kitchener. Um, so, but I mean, yeah, TBD, TBD. on linebacker. Uh, I think that the Romanov. Oh yeah. But I think that and but Slavkovsky, yeah. I'm uh, I'm comfortable with that pick at number one based mm -hmm. on the guys that were available. That's fine. That's that's very decent. Uh, I mean, Romanov turned into Kirby Doc. I think it's it's probably the best move that they've done of that group. And Sharat turned into New Hook. That's true. But there's also another pick, only a few, you know, a few slots lower. Uh, so basically, it was what it was their own, it was their own second round. It was their own second round pick them. plus the pick that they got for Sherrod. Yeah, that's it. So it's not so it's not just one pick. So you have to see also what what those guys are going to turn into. Um, but at at the same time, I think the, the, uh, New Hook is it, it, it's good. But so far, I would I would feel like that trade it's good but not great. The best, the best of the lot, in my view, is Romanov for Doc, and then I think that Slavkovsky, they've, they, it, it was a, it, it yeah. remains a, so, a smart pick to this day. This goes back to what we were just talking about. Like now, they have four first round picks over the next few drafts, and we're going to see what they do with them. You know, it's really uh, not to harp on the same thing, but it's 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 we've reached a stage where we can't assume. To your point previously, we can't assume they're going to use these to draft players all the time. So, um, so this is a work in progress, which I think Zach's question, I didn't read the whole question, but it kind of alluded to, um, kind of alluded to what's happening and, and, and to what extent should Hughes and Gordon, he ends it by saying, uh, should we be giving Hughes and Gordon more credit? Am I more impressed by this than I should be? Or does this appear to be outstanding asset management in real time? So, <laughs> Zach, I think uh, to answer that part, um, <laughs> I think Hughes and Gordon deserve credit. I don't know if they deserve more than they've gotten. I think they've gotten a pretty good review on on how they've managed the draft period throughout their time. Um, you're not necessarily more impressed than you should be. It is impressive for them. When you think about the fact that – I saw this somewhere, and I looked it up, and it's, it's true. Mark Bergevin never acquired a first-round pick. He was never able to go out and trade for a first round pick. Huh? He got a bunch of second round picks. And for a sentiment, yeah, exactly. And for a sentiment. So in he, one fell he swoop, made when sure. their first yeah. draft, they sentiment. drafted for a first round pick and traded for a sentiment. Just a few months into the job. Yeah. So um <laughs> so no, Zach, you, you you don't you know, you're not more impressed than you should be. And does this appear to be outstanding asset management in real time? It absolutely is so far let's see um i mean asset management the gold star for asset management is the sean monahan trade so i mean it's you don't get much better than that in terms of asset management so so yeah i think uh no i i heard people i saw people complain online saying oh they should have had a prospect not another uh, not another pick and there were no prospects but, available mean, Getting getting like there were no real difference available. making were prospects, it's, and I'm it, pretty sure the Jets just closed no. the door on their pro like it's just it's it's you're not working in in a real world scenario where the rest of the league looks at Sean Monahan. Yes, he's very good and he's a useful player, and there were a lot of teams that wanted him, but he's still he's not uh, he's not a difference making player. I mean, he's you're not going out and getting um, a high impact acquisition you know it's it's he is a player he's a he's a player who who is a depth player on a championship caliber team and that's you know he's a bit more than that in winnipeg 
but there were I think there were scenarios where he might have turned into a third line center on that team or or whatever whatever team acquired him. You know, it's it's not he's not a bona fide top six or top line offensive threat. And and while he's known as a two hundred foot player, there are loads of metrics that suggest his defensive game is not that great. So he had his warts, you know, he's definitely had his strengths. He was loved in the room. He was good with young players. All the things that Kevin Sheveldayoff and Rick, Rick Bonus have mentioned that they like about him are all true. But he was not the perfect player that I think a lot of people made him out to be leading into the deadline. So I think getting a first-round pick for a player like that, that you already got a first-round pick for, for acquiring to begin with, is pretty good asset management. Speaking of the Jets, I mean, you look at that. It, it, it looked as though... That team was bound to be like rebuilding and it was going nowhere fast. Not uh, only a few months ago, you know, when there was talks mm -hmm. of, of Shifley leaving and Hellebuck leaving and they traded Zubois. But now, they, you know, they've got Shifley, Ehlers, Perfetti, Corner, uh, Connor, sorry, Velarde, now Monaghan. Those are like very, very good players. You've got great um, supporting cast player like Aya Fallow and Lowry. You got Morrissey on defense. They've got hella buck and goal, and then you've got those kids that are coming, like McGrorty and uh, maybe Brad Lambert. Yeah. Kobe Barlow is a good prospect too. So they they're not, and they're not a very old team. They're like those guys. That yeah. nucleus is mainly late twenties. So they're they've set themselves up to be to integrate those those prospects that they wouldn't part with, and just. Add them to the mix so that the wheel keeps turning, and that, that it's. I'm really impressed with the, how it. Yeah, and it's, it turns out. It's to a lesson and, that and, um, you know, disaster scenarios are not always as are not always as bad as bad as they may seem. You know, I mean, Kevin Chevaldeoff made the best of that. Didn't panic. Made an excellent trade. The Dubois trade was very well executed. Uh, I think Rob Blake would probably like a do over on that one at this point. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's mm. jamming through crises, uh, which, you know, we took a little shot at Bergevin earlier. Bergevin showed a pretty adept ability to do as well. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's good for the Jets. And, and it, it's, again, it makes sense for them to give up a first round pick because of the prospects you mentioned that aren't even up there. And because of the young players on their team already, um, you know, they got, they can, they can afford to lose a first round pick to add a Sean Monaghan, even if it's just as a rental. Um, but as Ken Hughes said, yeah. there are some teams who just told him, I'm not spending a first-round pick on a rental. So that was that.